Follow these steps to set up your Scan and Go market. Be sure to have the following tools with you when setting up the machine. A screwdriver or drill with a number 2 Phillips head. A bubble level for leveling the machine. A Vennet wrench leveling tool. A pry bar, a crowbar or large screwdriver and hammer to split and remove the shipping skids. A box cutter or blade to cut open the packaging and a receptacle tester. Your machine was thoroughly inspected before leaving the factory and the delivery carrier has accepted responsibility for this machine. It is very important that you inspect the exterior of all cartons for damage upon receipt from the freight line. Damage in transit, although infrequent, does happen. Nearly all damage in transit can be determined from a visual inspection of cartons. Look for any damage to the cardboard corners. The machines are shipped in clear plastic. Look for tears in the plastic and inspect them closely. Take photos of any external damage to packaging before removing it. If this visual inspection reveals nothing, then the machine has probably been received in good condition. If any carton is received in a damaged condition, it is very important that you follow these steps. First, note any damage on the freight line's delivery receipt. Specify where the damage is located. Take photos of the damage. Second, contact the factory at 800-247-1787 for additional instructions. Send photos of the damage to damage at witchern.com. Include serial number and tracking number of shipment. Again, please inspect all equipment thoroughly before signing for it and before the driver leaves. Any questions pertaining to damaged equipment should be referred to the factory. We recommend setting up the cooler to the right of the snack machine. It's important to remember to make sure your machine power button is off before plugging the machine into the wall. Also, before plugging the power cord to the wall socket, the integrity of the main electrical supply must be checked for correct polarity, presence of a good ground, and the correct voltage. These checks should be repeated at six month intervals with routine safety electrical testing of the vendor itself. If the receptacle is not properly grounded or polarized, contact a licensed electrician to correctly polarize and or ground the receptacle to ensure safe operation. For proper operation of any equipment utilizing electronically controlled components, the equipment should be placed on an isolated or dedicated noise-free circuit properly polarized and grounded. Refer to the electrical specifications in your service manual to determine circuit amperage and protection. You can find the cooler's power cord on the back here. Locate the power cord here on the back of the machine. Loosen these four Phillips screws to remove the cover and place it off to the side. Now take out the power cord. Make sure the power cord is securely and properly plugged into the machine here. During transit, the vibration can cause this to become unplugged. Attach the cord to the back of the machine here. Your machine is shipped on wood skids that need to be removed. Remove 12 Phillips screws, three on each corner of the shipping cradle. You can then remove these wooden boards. Using a hammer and a large screwdriver or pry bar, split the skids by inserting the wedge into the provided separation slot and applying pressure to front or back. Then use the hammer to knock the wood away from the legs. Because of the weight of the machine, it may be helpful to slightly raise the machine or for someone to push on the side of the machine, as this will help take the pressure off as you separate the wood from the legs. You can then dispose of the wood boards and metal washers. 
After removing the skids and before leveling, make sure the legs have a half inch between the black part and the base of the leg. Raise the leg base by turning it counterclockwise. Do this for all the legs. To help ensure proper operation of your machine, it is critical the machine is level. Make sure the level is on the cabinet and not the door. Make sure the machine is level side to side and front to back. Raise the level until the bubble is in the middle so you know what side to raise or lower. Adjust the machine using an adjustable wrench or this leveling tool. Lower the machine by turning the leg clockwise and raise the machine by turning the leg counterclockwise. We recommend adjusting the machine in small increments and then checking the bubble level. On the bottom of the cabinet you will also find a packet with the machine service manual and snap-on leg covers. When attaching the leg covers, move them up so they are touching the top of the legs. In the bottom of the cabinet you will also find product crowders and product pushers. After setting up your Scan and Go Markets hardware, you'll need to enter the cooler's Bluetooth address on the snack machine. You will need to enter service mode by pressing this blue button on the control board. Then go to connections, flex connect setting, and enter password 2314. Next go to BLE1 and then enter the Bluetooth address that you find on the cooler door. You can also scan the address into the machine. Be sure to save by clicking the icon in the upper right hand corner of the touchscreen. Next ensure that the market is enabled. In service mode go to configuration. and select market. Here the market should be enabled. The market is equipped with health safety settings. This temperature sensing technology to prevent the sale of perishable food if the air temperature inside the food vendor rises above the health safety temperature limit for more than 15 minutes. The health safety settings will need to be enabled here in service mode through the market settings menu. Once the cooler is connected to the snack machine with the Bluetooth address, you can use this button to unlock the cooler. Inside the cooler, you will find shelves for the cooler and a top hat header for the snack machine. Follow these steps to set up the top hat header on the Scan and Go Market. The pieces you need can be found in this cardboard box. Use a quarter inch hex head to secure the sides of the header in place to the top of the cabinet. The screws you need will come in the kit. Secure two screws in here on the left. Use the carriage bolt to attach the front header piece. Use the nut to tighten the bolt in place inside the header using an 11 32nd inch driver once they've been started by hand. Now secure the right side of the header. Use the quarter inch hex head screws for the top of the cabinet and the carriage bolts to attach the front of the header to the side. The nuts go on the inside and the bolts are inserted from the outside. Secure the front of the header to the cabinet with quarter inch hex head screws. Now connect these harnesses for the LED assembly and feed it down through this hole in the top of the cabinet. Find the LED harness and plug it into the top of the power box here on the left. Follow these steps to build a food tray for your Scan and Go Market Cooler. Place the screws and washers in place on the shelves. Fit the food dividers on the shelf in the front slot here and lock into place by pushing this tab down. Space the dividers according to the products you're selling. Wide products can benefit from this floor insert surface to help them glide. Adjust the length to fit the shelf. Follow these steps to build a drink tray for your Scan and Go Market Cooler. Place a shelf on the drink selection tray so you can see where you will need to remove parts of the drink selection tray. You'll need to remove two sections from the back and one from the side. 
Unhook and remove these two selection modules. Then remove this one selection module, the third from the end, and put it to the side. Replace it with these two selection modules from the end. Use the notches here to attach the rest of the drink selection tray. Now use a blade to remove these selections from the back of the drink tray. Follow these steps to secure the shelves in the cooler. You will need to insert these black pieces into the side of the cooler before placing the shelf in place. Make sure the top is parallel to the ground and the top of the shelf. Put the top into the cooler first and then push the bottom part into place. Then put the shelf on top of these parts. Now select Market Barcode Add so you can create phantom motors for your cooler products. Here you will see all the motors available for your Scan and Go Market. Cooler products will be placed in phantom motors. Phantom motors begin after spiral motors from your snack machine. To create phantom motors, select the motor starting at 70 and select as many as you want. Then make sure the motor type is phantom and press save. Now you'll need to back out of service mode and then go back into service mode to perform a motor count. The motors you just selected and made phantom motors will now appear green as operational motors. Follow these steps to set up items in your Scan and Go Market Cooler. Begin by entering service mode by pressing the service mode button on the control board. Then go to the configuration menu and select market. Your password should be 2314. Select barcode add. Here you will see all the motors available for your Scan and Go market. Cooler products will be placed in phantom motors. Phantom motors begin after spiral motors for the snack machine. In this example, 68 is the last spiral motor in the snack machine and 70 is the first phantom motor that can be used for products in the cooler. To set up an item for customers to purchase from the cooler, press the motor you want to assign to a product. Then scan the item. The barcode will be seen here on the bottom left. If necessary, edit the price and item name. Before pressing the save icon in the upper right hand corner of the touch screen. When you're done adding and saving all your cooler products back out of service mode completely. Here's another way to set up items for your customers to purchase on your Scan and Go market that will not require you to enter the price and name for every product at the machine. Instead, you will include the barcode, price, and name in a CSV file so all you have to do at the machine is scan the product and the price and name will appear from the CSV file you upload. To begin, you'll need to create a spreadsheet titled Product List, one word, no spaces. Column A will be for the product's UPC barcode. Column B is for the product name. This name can be specific to the item you're selling. Column C is the product price. Column D is the product category. This is a general name that you can use to categorize the product names. All items in the product category will have the same price and selection number. Column E is the selection. You should use selection numbers not already being used by the snack machine. Once your columns are created, you will need to select all the cells underneath these column titles and right click to Format Cells. Under the Number tab, make sure the category is text. Now you will be able to properly type in the product barcodes in column A. Now fill in each row for your products. In this example, we've grabbed a smart water. In column A, we will put the barcode number for our smart water we want to sell. You will find this number under the barcode on the packaging. In column B, we will put the name of the product. 
In column C, we'll put the price we want for the smart water. In column D, we will write the product category. In column E, we will put the phantom motor we are using for this product. Next, export the spreadsheet as a CSV file. Place in a folder named Products on a USB drive. Save the name as ProductList.csv. Then, go to the machine and plug the USB into the Raspberry Pi. Begin by entering service mode by pressing the service mode button on the control board. Then go to the configuration menu and select market. Your password should be 2314. Select load products from USB and wait for the loading to complete. Then select barcode add. Select the motor you're using for the product. Then scan the product barcode. When the barcode number, price, and name appear, press Save. Back out of service mode when you're done scanning in the items from your spreadsheet. The product at the machine. Instead, you will enter or scan a single key product barcode that will serve to add all the products you've entered into your spreadsheet under that key product category. As long as the item is listed in the key product category, the item will be able to be scanned and purchased by your customers. Here's how to set up this feature. To begin, you'll need to create a spreadsheet titled Product List, one word, no spaces. Column A will be for the product's UPC barcode. Column B is for the product name. This name can be specific to the item you're selling. Column C is the product price. Column D is the product category. This is a general name that you can use to categorize the product names. All items in the product category will have the same price and selection number. Column E is the selection. You should use selection numbers not already being used by the snack machine. Once your columns are created, you will need to select all the cells underneath these column titles and right click to Format Cells. Under the Number tab, make sure the category is text. Now you will be able to properly type in the product barcodes in column A. The first products you will want to put in the spreadsheet are key products. Key products will be used to price the various products you want to put in the cooler. Key products are not physical products but are template products you will use to categorize your real products. All your real products that fall into a single key product category will have the same price and same selection number on the product list spreadsheet. You can make up a UPC barcode for the key products. We recommend keeping it simple so that you can keep track of your key products easier. When the spreadsheet is complete, you can either bring the key product barcode numbers to the machine to type in or print out this made up barcode to scan in at the machine that will upload all the products you've added on the spreadsheet within this key product category. In column B, you will put the name for the type of products you want to include in the product category. In column C, you should put the price you want all the items in the category to be. In column D, you will put the name of the product category. This broad name will help you categorize all the items you want to have this price. In column E, you will put the selection for this key product. Make sure it is not already used for an item from the snack machine. So let's add a product to the sports drink one key product category. In this example, we've grabbed a red fruit punch Gatorade. In column A, we will put the barcode number for our red fruit punch Gatorade we want to sell. You will find this number under the barcode on the packaging. In column B, we will put the name of the product. In column C, we will put the price from the key product we want the red fruit punch Gatorade to be included in. In column D, we will write the product category from the key product. This includes putting the red fruit punch Gatorade into the sports drink 1 key product. In column E, we will input the selection from the key product we're using for this product. Now, when we upload this CSV file and scan in the key product barcode, all of these products will be added to the machine. Here, we will create another key product for different items. First, make up the barcode number that you will need to input numerically into the machine or print out to scan at the machine. Second, include the product name to identify the type of item in the product category. 
Third, include the price for these products. Fourth, write the name of the product category. And fifth, include a selection number not being used. Now we will add real products into this key product category. First, here is the real barcode for this item. Second, here is the name of the product. Third, here is the price, which is the same as the key product for this specific item. Here is the key product category. Fifth, here is the selection number from the key product category for this specific item. Once your product list spreadsheet is complete with your key products and their corresponding real products, go to this website to print out your key products barcodes. You can also bring the key product barcode numbers to the machine to type in manually. Next, export the spreadsheet as a CSV file. Place in a folder named Products on a USB drive. Save the name as productlist.csv. Then go to the machine and plug the USB into the Raspberry Pi. Begin by entering service mode by pressing the service mode button on the control board. Then go to the configuration menu and select market. Your password should be 2314. Select load products from USB and wait for the loading to complete. Then select barcode add. Select the motor you are using for the key product. Then scan the key product barcode you created or type in the barcode number from your spreadsheet. When the barcode number appears, press this green arrow on the right. When you're done adding items from your spreadsheet, back out of service mode completely. For more assistance, go to vennetusa.com.